All right, so I wanted to make a quick video because I'm seeing a lot of, you know, ads on YouTube and ads on Facebook and different boot camps and people selling courses and promising, you know, everyone who wants to learn how to code that they're going to get a job right away and they're going to make, you know, $100,000 a year and they're going to just live this lavish lifestyle and it's going to be super easy and things are just going to be all rainbows and butterflies and you're not going to have to work hard for it. And I got me thinking maybe I should do a realities versus expectations on becoming a self-taught programmer and getting a job and maybe just some of my input on my experience going through the process of teaching myself how to code and landing a job. And now after, I don't know, like four years of being a developer and making a decent salary and having a really good job, there's a lot that goes into it. So let's go over some of the expectations versus realities that, that I wanted to talk about right now. Expectation, you're gonna get a job in three months. Reality, it might take you a very long time to land your first job. I spent every day learning how to code and practicing and fumbling around and figuring stuff out and doing tutorials and watching videos and building projects and building my portfolio and going to meetups for 10 months. It was, it was almost a year. Let's just, let's call it a year. 10 months is the better part of a year. And that's how long it took me to get a job. Yes, you can get a job in three months. Yes, there are people that do it. No, that is not the norm. I'm sorry to break it to you. This stuff is hard. When you're going in self-taught, even if you're going in a boot camp, there's a lot of boot camps that promise, you know, three month boot camp, and you're going to get a job right away. We guarantee you a job. Now that's a bold statement and while some of them will place you, there are some that are scams, but there are legitimate boot camps that will help you through the hiring process and all that. But saying that they can guarantee you a job is a very bold statement and depending on where you're at, depending on what the job market is like, it may not happen right away. So that's my first expectation versus reality. It's probably gonna take you a bit longer then three months to get a job, and it could take you six months, it could take you a year, it could take you a year and a half. Just remember that this is long-term commitment, right? This is something that you wanna do, this is a, a life change, this is, this is you bettering yourself and trying to improve your life and ha make a career. People go to college for four years to, to get a career. People go to college for two years to get, to get an associate's, right? Think about that. So a three month boot camp, or you sitting around on your computer at home teaching yourself how to code with no direction, it, it's, it's, it's very involved and it's not gonna be quick most of the time. So that's gonna be my first one. With that said, the next expectation versus reality. This stuff is easy and learning how to code is not hard and anyone can do it. While anyone can do this, it is far from easy. It, the reality is that it's very hard. And some of the expectations that these, you know, boot camps or people that are selling courses that guarantee that they're going to teach you how to code and you're going to get a job right away and that it's going to be easy. That's, that's just not true. It's hard. Being a programmer is hard. Learning how to code is hard. Understanding how to build an application is hard. All of it, an if else statement is hard. A for loop is hard. I remember writing the traditional for loop with for i let of plus plus i all that stuff and then loop over that stuff i remember having to write that so many times now i write it by pure muscle memory i remember just having to, to google that every time and feeling dumb because i couldn't remember that one simple thing i remember feeling dumb because I couldn't remember the difference between margin and padding or little stuff on HTML and CSS. And everyone says, oh, HTML and CSS is not a programming language. And when you hear people say that and you don't, can't even understand it, it makes you feel dumb because it's hard. This stuff is just difficult. This stuff is not easy. So if your expectation is that this is gonna be easy because you see a lot of ads doing it and you're, you know, everyone's saying learn how to code, it's, it's an easy way to get a really good paying job, 
that's not necessarily going to be the case. So the reality is that it's going to be hard and it's going to take you a little bit of time. But if you commit to it, anyone can learn this. I, I, I mean it. Anyone can learn this stuff, but it's just, it's just not going to be easy. So prepare to struggle a bit and that's fine. And I mentioned pay, so I'm going to go right into my next one with that. The expectation of pay. All right, expectation is gonna be that you're gonna make $120,000, $150,000 a year. The reality is that if you go to a boot camp, if you go self-taught, even if you go to college, making that much money at your first job is gonna be very rare. Unless you live in a major tech hub. And then if you live in San Francisco, if you live in Seattle, if you live in Palo Alto or Silicon Valley, if you live in New York City, if you live in any of these places, $100,000 a year is chump change. $100,000 a year, you're probably gonna have five roommates just so you can not have to spend all your money on rent. So if you do make 100 grand a year right away after learning how to code for three months or coming out of a boot camp or even out of college, chances are that they're paying you that because they that's the the least amount that they can pay you just so you can survive in one of those big cities. Now, the truth is after you get some experience, after you've done it for a while, you become more valuable and yes, then you can start making more money and potentially you will hit six figures. I'm pretty close to it. I've interviewed for jobs that paid six figures. I've gotten pretty close to accepting jobs and getting hired for jobs that paid that much. I'm pretty close to that now, but I have you know three and a half years of professional experience plus the time that I spent learning how to code, so I have experience. If you're just getting into this and you're just learning how to code and you are expecting to make a ton of money right away, the reality is that you might not make that much right away, but you still will make a really good wage. My first job, I made a, a really good wage. I made more than I ever made before in my life at a job. I had a salary, I had benefits, I had, I had bonuses, I had all that good stuff. And now at my current job, I make way more money. I practically doubled my salary from my first job. And I have union benefits and great health insurance and an awesome pension. So your base salary isn't always the end all be all, you gotta think, total compensation, the entire package of what the company is paying you as your salary. But nonetheless, don't think that you're going to make 150 grand right away. A lot of these ads that I've been seeing are saying that you will learn how to code in three months and you will make $120,000 a year like this. And, <laughs> and that's just not the reality of things. And, and don't get me wrong. Some people do, some people make that, but it's, it's not always the case. So expectation versus reality on that is if you're expecting $120,000 a year, the reality is if you're self-taught or a boot camp, you're probably going to be closer to like 60 or 70 or something along those lines, maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more, but breaking six figures, being self-taught with no experience at your first job. Good luck. I, I, I don't necessarily think that that is the norm. So I wanted to clear that up in this video. All right. So the next expectation, you're going to get hired at a fang company or an amazing startup that just has all the cool stuff that you see in all those day in the life videos and you're going to be drinking beer and kombucha and playing ping pong all day and playing video games and hanging out with everyone and you're going to be high-fiving when you commit code and you're going to have meetings on tandem bicycles rolling around the campus and while there are some companies that are like that that is not the reality for most software development jobs. If you've been watching a lot of these day in the life videos, now while some of them are realistic and they kind of just show someone coding all day, many of them show you this lavish lifestyle that developers live and you know that we're like rock stars who sit behind a computer and hack away and solve all these highly complex problems. And if that's your expectation going into this, remember that 
what you're doing right now, if you're self-taught and you're sitting on your computer all day and you're writing code and you're on Google and you're reading documentation and you're watching videos on new technology that you don't really understand and you're sitting there staring at a screen and you're scratching your head and you're getting frustrated because you can't figure something out and you know, you're just at a computer all day. That's pretty much what your job is gonna be like. And some companies have cool culture and, and, and they're pretty chill and whatnot, but for the most part, you're not just gonna be hanging out at the break room all day. You're not just gonna be playing games all day. You're gonna be sitting at your computer. You're gonna be working. You're gonna be staring at a screen. You're gonna be answering emails. You're gonna be attending meetings. You're gonna be calling in the meetings. You're gonna be doing a lot of office work and coding. And that's what the reality of it is. It's not this rock star lifestyle of a programmer. Trust me, programmers are far from rock stars. <laughs> Although you'll see TV shows like Silicon Valley that make it seem very fun. It was, I love that show. I actually got into that show before I was learning how to code. And I remember when I started learning how to code, I would I would think like, oh man, it's gonna be a lot like Silicon Valley. I love that show. Or all these different movies that, that paint programming in this different light and make it seem like this super awesome, fun job. It's a good job. It's a job that pays the bills. It can be fun at times. It's challenging. You're constantly learning. But it's not the reality of things. It's kind of boring. You sit at a desk all day. You get carpal tunnel and your vision goes bad and your neck starts to hurt because you hunch over staring closely at your screen and you have to get an ergonomic desk so you can stand up every 20 minutes to keep you from falling asleep and getting back spasms. <laughs> and, and, and that's the reality of it. So it's not as fun as some of these videos make it out to be, but it is a good job. So I'm not trying to down talk it, but I just wanted to let people know who are learning how to code or wanting to become a self-taught programmer or software developer or go to bootcamp or whatever, that it's probably not gonna be as fun as you think it is or as fun as people are making it look like it is. All right, so one more expectation versus reality that is actually gonna maybe ease some of the tension for people who are watching this video or worrying about learning how to code and it being so difficult and not being able to remember anything and feeling like you don't know anything and feeling like it's just too hard. Expectation. You need to know everything. You need to be an encyclopedia of information. And the second that you come across a problem, you need to know the answer and you need to answer it right away. And you need to just be one of those hackers that you see on TV that just sit there and just type away. 200 words per minute and like that's so not true. The truth is that most of the time, unless you're very experienced, you're not gonna know the answer to many things. And even if you're a little experienced, technically I'm like an intermediate dev, right? I'm, I'm three years experience. I've been doing it professionally for three years. I write code every day. I kind of know what I'm doing. I can build an application from, from start to finish and I understand databases now and I understand CRUD functionality and I know how to how to set things up and I know how to build an application. If, if you made me build an application on my own, I could do it. That took me many years and a lot of Googling. So the reality is you don't need to know everything. You're not gonna know everything. The reality is that you're gonna have to Google a lot of stuff. You're gonna have to know how to find the answer. You're gonna have to get good at learning how to find the answer. And eventually you will know a lot of things, but you're still gonna get stuck. You're still not gonna know everything. And the expectation that you might be setting for yourself that you need to have everything memorized, that you need to know everything, and that if you can't remember anything that you're a failure, the truth is I don't try to memorize stuff anymore. I did when I was first learning. And the reality is that I don't need to. I have Google. We live in a day and age where you can answer any question you want on your computer. If you have the internet, which every developer is gonna have the internet when they're working, 
you can get the answer for most of your problems. You will come across problems that you won't know the answer to and you'll get stuck and then you'll have to discuss it with your colleagues and ask someone who has more experience to help you out and that's perfectly fine. But don't set this expectation that you need to know everything because there is no developer that knows everything. Even a developer with 20 years of experience still comes across problems that they don't understand, that they get stuck on, and that they need to ask people for help with. It happens. It happens less to them than it does to someone with six months experience, and, and that's perfectly normal because time trumps all. And experience over time is what's gonna make you a better developer and is what's gonna make you a wealth of information and knowledge. But you don't expect to know everything. You don't need to. The reality is that you're gonna be Googling a lot of stuff and you'll learn a lot of stuff along the way. So you don't need to memorize everything. And I just wanted to throw that one in there because I feel like this whole video was was kind of like a little hard on, on you know people that might be thinking like, oh man, is this guy just telling me that all of this is gonna suck? No, it's a great job. It's a good job. It's, it's, an, it's a fun job if you like learning, if you like solving problems, if you like, Working on applications, if you don't mind sitting at a computer all day, if you like an office job with stability and good benefits and good insurance and good time off and all those things, most software development jobs offer those things. And go into it knowing that. Don't go into it thinking that it's gonna be all fun and games because at the end of the day, it's a job. And it's a good job. And that's all I wanted to say in this video. Thank you very much for watching if you've stuck around this far. I hope I didn't make anyone feel like, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this because I encourage everyone to learn how to code. Even if you're not trying to get a job as a developer, if you're trying to build your own app, if you're just trying to learn for fun and a hobby because you wanna just learn something new. I encourage everyone to learn how to code because it changed my life for the better and it's probably one of the best things I could have ever done. I made a career out of it and now in the future if I decide to not pursue this as a career any longer and go into my own business or start my own startup or build my own application, I have all the skills that I need to do that. And learning those skills is very beneficial and it's an amazing thing. So just think about some of these things that, that you're seeing on YouTube and reading on blogs and these ads that they're feeding you. And just consider what I told you because I'm trying to keep it as real as I can and let people know how, how it kind of really is because I wish that someone would have done that for me and there were a lot of YouTubers that were doing that for me and now there's more YouTubers and more people talking about this stuff and information is power and honestly, it's good to know these things going in when you're trying to pursue this as a career just so you're better prepared for it. With all that said, I'm done talking. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel for more tips and tricks on becoming a self-taught programmer and learning how to code. Thanks and I'll see you next time.